Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is lesson three, examples of dilations. So in this lesson, we are going to dilate circles and ellipsi. And then we're going to try to determine if we have already dilated something, enlarged it, what do we have to do to get it back to our original? So those are the things we're going to discuss in this lesson. So we're going to feed off of lesson two, where we learned how to dilate an object by a scale factor. And in this case, we're doing a scale factor of R equals three centered from a center O, which is the origin. So we're going to center from this point right here. So what I want to do is take my ruler out and bring that down. Okay. And I want to measure a point on the circle on the circle so if I put my ruler right at zero as close as I can because accuracy matters here and I rotate this circle I can pick any point I want and let's try picking integers so if I bring this over I'm going to pick a value that is right at four four mill or four centimeters so if I rotate this out of the way this point right here I will call it B and the distance from the origin to B, if I were still here, the, or, the distance from O to B was 4, and I want to triple that. Okay, so the distance from B, from O to B was 4. This is four, distance of 4 right here. Remember, it's a diagonal, so it won't be right on the 4 diagonals corner. Now, when I multiply 4 times 3, that's 12. So then if I put my ruler back here and I come up here, 12 is right at the end here. So at that end point right here, I will call that B prime. So obviously I can't draw a circle from one point. So if I just tried to draw a circle from here, um, I have no reference point. I've, I could make a circle like that. I could make a circle like this. I don't have any idea as to how big to make it. So I need a few more points is my point. Ha, huh, get it. All right, so now I'm going to move this, and I'm going to move it until I try to get another at least half. Okay, so there's 4.5 right here. So if I measure to here, that is 4.5, and I'll call that C, C, not C prime, just C. And that was 4.5, and I need to scale that up by 3. So 5 times 3 is 15. 4 times 3 is 12, plus 1 is 13. I'm going to end up at 13.5, which is way up here at this point here. So now I have two points. So let me draw that line to show you what we're actually doing. We are scaling from the center origin this distance times 3. Okay, so there's two points. So now I know my circle is going to be like here, but it's still not enough to accurately draw because it's really tough to see where that's going to end up with just two points. So let's keep doing this until we feel comfortable with seeing what we actually are trying to achieve. And right here is a point which is four. So I want to go out three times four, which is out to 12, which is right here, right here. So I will call this point D, and I'll call this point D prime. So when I draw this line segment from the origin through D and D prime, that would be a distance of one, and this would be a distance of three, three, three times this one, okay, or 4.5 in this case, times three, which is 13.5. Okay, so now I know I can draw a circle from here to here, but the arc has to also come back around here, so it's still kind of tough. We're starting to get an idea as to see where this will be, but I'm going to keep going with multiple points here. So now I'm going to go to four and a half again, like I did on the other side. So here's 4.5, and I'll call that E, and I'm going to extend out to 13.5 again, which is here, and I'm going to draw my line. Okay, 
So that was 12, and this one's 13.5, and that is here, and that is E prime. So now I'm starting to see a circle, but it's still not quite there yet, so we need to keep going. So I really still can't draw a circle with just four points. Okay, so I'm just going to keep up this process. I will pause the video now so you don't have to watch every single point, but when I come back, I'm going to have maybe three, four more points. Okay, so here's a few more points. I did F and G, H and I, and J, and I put the values up here of their short, shorter distance. So it's hard to see this, but this is D, this is E, this is I, this is H, or this is J, this is I. And then their images are over here. These are the pre-images, and the images are over here. So then what I can do is I can finally come around here and see where this circle is going to be. And obviously I'm having difficulty drawing this, but see if I can do a little bit better. Actually, I could use my compass here. And if I can also figure out that if my radius is one and I triple it, it's going to be a distance of three. And if I put my center, if I can find my center that way, which is pretty difficult, so that's why we aren't using the compass. It's hard to tell where the middle of all these points is. I would say maybe right around here, but it's then it's going to be hard to find how that circle is going to go. But it's something like that. I'm off a little bit here with this with the dots. My radius was a little too big here, but you get the idea. The more dots you have, the better representation you have of making a copy of a circle. Okay, let's move on to the next. Okay, uh, number one says to dilate an ellipse from the center O at the origin of the graph with a scale factor of R equals two. Use as many points as necessary to plot. So I will get my ruler. Using the origin as our center, I'm assuming. Yes, center O at the origin of the graph. And this time I'm going to just find the top and bottom point. So if I pick this point here, that is 22 millimeters, so I'll call that A. So I'm going to put a graph over here or a table over here, and I'm going to say A is 22 millimeters. So therefore, A prime must be two times that, so that should be 44 millimeters. So I'll put my ruler back on that line as close as possible, come out to 44, and that is right here. So this is A prime. Okay. Now if I do the same at the top, the highest point of this, which is right here, and put a point there and call that B, then if I bring my ruler over here, that is exactly 45 millimeters. So B equals 45 millimeters. And I shouldn't just call it B. I should say O A, O A prime, O B, and so forth. Okay, and they're segments, so I could do this as well. So now I want to know what the length of O B prime is. Well, 45 millimeters times 2 will be 90 millimeters. So I'm going to leave the ruler here and go up to 90, which is 9 centimeters, and that's right here, and that will be B prime. Okay, so now that I've started this, I'm seeing something happen here. If my pre-image is a, an ellipse where the height is the longer um, direction than the width, then my image is going to be the same. And if B is vertical, a vertical distance from A on the same X value in my grid, then A prime and B prime should also be. So there's a problem here with my 
measurement because since the grid is not in centimeters and my ruler is, that is not going to work for me. So what I need to do is just use the ruler as a straight edge and find on that straight edge where the point will end up. So I'm going to erase these points here and disregard this here because of our scale is not working. Okay, so trial and error, that didn't work. Let's try something else. So I am just going to draw a line from the origin through A. I do not want to move it. I want it to stay right there. Okay, so there is my line. Well, let's think of this a different way. If x is 2 and I want to double the distance from the origin, then my point has to be on 4. So if I double 2, I'm over to 4, so my point should be right here. So if I think about that, this is about 1.9. Well, 1.9 times 2 is 3.8, and that's not what we're doing here either. So this is not going, you can't just multiply the x's and the y's as well because that's what's going to throw us off with our calculation. So if I now measure to b, I don't even have to measure, I just want to bring my ruler up. I'm just using the ruler as a straight line and I'm going to draw a line from the origin up to here and then move the ruler down. So I went through that point B, so B prime is going to be somewhere on this line. Well, it has to be vertical straight up from A, so my B prime is going to be here. There's my B prime. And I'm going to continue this. Um, I'm going to bring my ruler over to this point here and draw a line through it, and I'm going to call that C. Right here is C, and I am at the point approximately, oh, I'd say one and a third. So if I double that, that'd be two and two thirds. Or I'm sorry, it's two and a third, so it'd be two and two, four and two thirds. So there's two and two and one third times two would be four and two thirds. So I'm thinking it should probably be somewhere around here. Okay, so now if I bring this up and do the same for the other point on the other side, right here, and draw a line through it and continue, then I have this point that's right here, which is approximately, oh, just a little bit more than one and a half, so it's going to be just a little bit more than three, so it's going to be up here somewhere. So then I can really see where these should be because I have to be able to draw a line. I guess I'm off a little bit there. One's lower than the other. Um, so if this were up further up here, and this was down further over here, so then they'd be straight across from each other right here. That is, we could also measure that distance with respect to this grid and double it. And we're just going to keep doing this again. So if I draw a line through here, and in all actuality, when I'm going through, I'm creating two new points here and here. And if the grid, if I'm using this one and not this one, then the grid is going to the is going to come around like so. And then I need to copy this point to somewhere around here. And this point here would get copied to somewhere up here. And then I can make a smoother, the more off, the more frequently I do this, the more frequent my points occur, the more accurate my ellipse is going to become. And there would be a copy of the ellipse that is scaled up to. So it says, what shape was the dilated image? Well, it was also an the image was an ellipse, so the, the pre-image was an ellipse, so the image will also be an ellipse. Okay, the shape does not change in dilations. The size does, but the shape does not. Okay, exercise three says triangle ABC, which is the bigger one up here, 
right here, this is triangle ABC, has been dilated from the center O by a scale factor of one fourth. So the distance from O to C prime is one, and the distance from O to C would be four times whatever O to C is. Whatever the length of OB prime is, the distance from O to B is four times this, and so on, all the way around. So it says, using a centimeter ruler, verify that it would take a scale factor of R equals 4 from the center to map triangle A prime, B prime, C prime back up to the original image onto the triangle ABC. Okay, so if I get my ruler like they say to do, and bring it down and put 0, and it said use centimeters. Now keep in mind this is a printout of a PDF, which obviously will change the size of the image in the diagram. So if you measure this on your paper, you will be getting different values than I am. But I get B prime is a distance from O to B prime. So I'll say O B prime, the length of O B prime equals, and that looks like 15, 16, 17 millimeters. And so therefore, oh, that was C, not B. So let me erase that. That is the length of O C prime is 17 millimeters. So therefore, how long would O C have to be? Well, if I multiply 17 times 4, 7 times 4 is 28. 4 times 1 is 4 plus 2 is 6. 17 times 4 is 68 millimeters. So if I look up here, here's 7, and sure enough, this is 68. I'm going to do the same thing with O B prime. So OB prime equals, I'm going to rotate this over to here, and here's 1, 0.1, 2, 3, 4, almost 5, not quite 15 millimeters. So I'll call it 14 millimeters. If I'm going to scale it up by a factor of 4, then 4 times 4 is 16, 4 times 1 is 4, plus 1 is 5, so I should get 56 millimeters for the length of OB. The distance from O to B should be 56 millimeters. And if I look, here's 55, 56. It's actually more like 59. So if this were 15, then that would be 60. 15 times 4 is 60. So it was a little more than 14, less than 15. So our, we're doing an approximation here, of course, because it's not exact millimeters. Okay, and then finally, if I come over to here and measure A, A prime, so the length of O, A prime equals, and I look at this measurement, and it looks like 20, here's 25, 24, 23, it looks like 22 and a half, let's be more accurate here, 22.5 millimeters. Well, if I factor that up by a scale of 4, 5 times 4 is 20, 4 times 2 is 8, plus 2 is 10, 4 times 2 is 8, plus 1 is 9, I should get 90 millimeters. And if I bring this around, it should come out right around the 9, and there it is. Off by just a smidgen, about 1 millimeter. So, like I said, just depending on where my start point is, I can be off by just a little bit, and that will throw the scale off. But this is close enough to prove that if I multiply a scale factor of one-fourth back up four times, I get back to my original. And that's what we were trying to show. So what they're saying is, right here, this is the original triangle ABC. We scaled it down a quarter to A prime, B prime, C prime. So this little triangle down here is one-fourth the size of this one here. And then they said, what would we have to scale it up to get back to the original, and when we do a scale factor of four, then the reciprocal or the inverse of our scale will get us back to our original. So if I had a scale factor of six, if I scaled something up six and then I wanted to shrink it back down, to get it back to the original, I would have to do a ratio or a scale factor of one six, a dilation of one six to get it back to the original. Okay, that is the end of lesson three. Review the lesson summary and go do your problem set.